everyone. Thanks so much for being here today. Um, we're really excited to present uh, this project that we've done over the past few months. Um, so just uh, to introduce ourselves uh, really briefly, my name is Natalie Berkman. I'm Instructional Design Manager at ASEC Business School. Um, we're one of the top rated business schools in France and uh, we've got quite a lot of students who are all required to take a few entirely online courses. So that'll be the topic of our talk today. And I'd love to present my team, my brilliant uh, and accomplished team. Uh, so first we've got uh, Nadia, she's our resident Moodle uh, specialist. We've got uh, Marion, the driving force behind the pedagogical strategy we took uh, with these courses, and Erwan, our data uh, enthusiast and specialist. Um, so we're all going to present, uh, first of all, what is a SPOC and what are the SPOCs specifically at our school at ASEC? Um, number two, um, what was our new design? What was our new approach? Uh, we decided to adopt a learner-centric model and apply it to Moodle um, in a really nice, sort of welcoming sort of uh, design. Uh, then Nadia will talk about uh, our assessment strategy and how we implemented it, technically speaking, in Moodle. And finally, Erwan will talk about the data tracking and how, we could, how we've uh, tried to ensure student success in these entirely asynchronous and online courses uh, through Moodle Analytics. Uh, so without further ado, um, I'm sure many of you have heard of MOOCs and probably heard of SPOCs, but uh, just so you know, SPOCs an acronym. Uh, MOOC is a massive open online course. A SPOC is a small private online course. Uh, so the, um, the main distinction is that it's an online course, kind of like a MOOC, that's uh, reserved for a specific community. Um, so they're cohort based. They combine digital elements like video and interactive peer-peer exercises with discussions and lectures, which can be live or recorded or even a mix of both. Um, so at ASEC, um, we have five SPOCs. Uh, we decided, uh, we picked the topic for these SPOCs based on um, our key points in the school's uh, general strategy. So these are topics that we believe that all students pursuing a business degree today should have exposure to. Um, we have, so the five SPOCs are AI, uh, very important nowadays I think, uh, responsible leadership, the fundamentals of entrepreneurship, diversity and inclusion in the workplace, and companies and climate change. Um, um, uh, we give these uh, to every single student in our three main pre-experience programs, so the Global BBA, the Grand Ecole, which is our Master in Management, our flagship program, and our Specialized Master's program. So for a grand total of 6,000 students, so obviously it's a bit of a challenge. Um, and uh, that's about it, so I'm going to pass it over to uh, Marion, who's going to explain what our learning centric model is and how we found a design to fit it. Yes, so we created a learner-centric model based on these three aspects. So first, we defined a pedagogical framework using, of course, Bloom's taxonomy. And we also decided to use uh, think significant learning models because we want to focus on um, transmission and impact on the students. And we also used a skills-based approach because we want these courses to be useful to the students for their careers and for, for their daily life. And from this pedagogical framework, uh, we defined an assessment strategy. So Nadia will speak about it later, but very briefly, we decided to focus more on formative assessment and self-assessment rather than somatic assessment, which is necessary from the institution, but we decided to focus more on the first two aspects. And finally, the mood of design, because at the end of the day, it's all about design. So uh, we created a visual identity for each SPOC, but an harmonized structure. So all the five SPOCs adopt the same structure, so the students are not lost. They know where to find which information. And we also created an explicit onboarding and workload uh, in the onboarding tile that I will show you just after this. And uh, finally, we decided to create more interactive content using uh, mostly H5P uh, interactive books. <laughs> So uh, this is an example. Uh, this is our AI for business POC, which we are particularly proud of. Uh, so here you can see uh, on the left the current visual identity. So we choose um, images that uh, are coherent with the theme of the SPOC. 
And um, on the first tile, which is called onboarding, you can find uh, a presentation that you can see on the right. It's made with Genially, and uh, it's made uh, like a book, so the students can choose to navigate uh, it in a linear way, but they can also choose to click on what they're interested in. So they can choose to click on course structure and peer evaluation and go back and all is made to make the students free of an actor of his early learning. And then you can see an example uh, of what you can see inside of a tile. So if you, for example, if you click on the phase one tile, you can see uh, the content. So it was made with bootstrap. There are bootstrap cards. And if you click on it, you can access to uh, H5P interactive books uh, because our content is mostly made of videos and readings and it's kind of a passive activity. So we, dec so we didn't have the time to remade all in a short notice. So we decided to focus on design and created uh, H5P interactive books uh, to make it more uh, user friendly for students. Um, in the original Spox, our strategy was based on exclusively um, summative assessment activities and um, with the automatic correction, basic, basically uh, multiple choices and workshops. Um, while we're very aware that our um, teachers can't grade 6,000 essays, um, we try to adapt the strategy to um, uh, with the concept of mastery learning, uh, significant learning, and then um, competency-based learning. Uh, and our assessment strategy makes now um, both use of formative assessment and summative, and summative assessment. Our formative assessment strategy was broken into two components, um, formative multiple choice questions and self-assessment questions. And self-assessment questions, yes. We even invented a little character called um, uh, Evalue Bot to help students <laughs> to help students go through assessments, um, uh, go through assessment activities. Its nature, its nature, uh, if it's formative or uh, summative, and how to approach it. Um, we used H5P for the multiple for the multiple choice questions. Uh, for two reasons. The one, um, one reason with the advent of ChatGPT, um, we have that browser extension called ChatGPT for Moodle, which allows students to get all the answers with all the quizzes native in Moodle. And that extension doesn't work with, with the H5P. And the second reason was the fact that we would, we, yeah, we wanted to personalize the quizzes to make it fit into the uh, visual identities of the Spox. We also used the self-assessment to build the learner's soft skill through these courses. And we used an external tool called um, Feedback Fruits. And the formative assessment and the self-assessment are part of uh, an engagement grade. And for the summative assessment, which is peer assessment in our case, we also use the external tool called Feedback Fruits um, because it has a user-friendly interface and a more powerful analytical uh, features than the native tool in Moodle, which is Workshop. And this graph represents um, our proposal for the engagement grade breakdown for the teachers. And every professor can customize it however they want. And now Erwan will talk to you about data. Thanks, Nadia. So finally, to better ensure uh, success of students in the, in the SPOX, we have chosen to use data tracking in three different ways, as you can see. So it's also important to keep in mind that um, it's, it's also important to keep in mind for most of our students, these box are the first experience of a fully um, insecurious online courses. It is also their first contact with uh, Moodle at ESSEC. So first, completion tracking and re-engagement. We have chosen to put in place um, completion tracking to allow students to visualize their progress in the course. And we also, uh, additionally, we have set up automated reminders um, to, yeah, to using re-engagement and also to reduce the workload of our pedagogical assistance. 
Second, second, we use Moodle Analytics uh, to identify students at risk. So I hope you had the chance to see the presentation of uh, Stefan uh, last Tuesday, because I won't delve uh, into the details. But um, thanks to our collaboration with Stefan, with our DevOps team, uh, Rojdi and Melvin, and also with the creator of Moodle Analytics, we have uh, conducted several beta tests. Um, practically speaking, uh, we send an email to a randomly selected group of students at risk, identified by the algorithm, and um, these students succeed in a greater number than those in the control group who did not receive the email. Uh, so we have a delta of 11% uh, between the treated group and the, and the control group. So this year, we will sending um, multiple emails on a weekly basis to, to students, uh, depending on their engagement uh, with the course. And the third point, so analytics to identify outliers. Mm, this year, uh, as Nadia said, we replace all the workshop activity by the peer evaluation tool uh, Feedback Fruits. Uh, so why do we make this change? Uh, the reason is because they have developed an analytic dashboard that can be used uh, to identify outliers. And uh, even with a large cohort of uh, students in, uh, in our course. Uh, this should allow us to understand which students uh, took the assignment uh, seriously for the essay and feedback to their peers, um, a task that was quite di difficult in the past. So you see our journey to rethinking assessment and enhance students' engagement in our five spots uh, for these new academic years. Mm, if you would like uh, any further details, feel free to contact us at uh, kelab at uh, Thanks, everyone. And if you have any question, I think we, we have time. Um, we're glad to, to answer them. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Hi, thanks very much for that. I'd wondered if you'd made any use of H5P's essay question activity, which is where the um, activity will give feedback on an essay question by identifying keywords that the student must type in. And I wondered if that's something that you might want to look at for, again, more autonomous approach to essay feedback. I appreciate it's not the same as a teacher grading an essay, but if you're looking for facts and keywords, it's a really great way of highlighting that and providing a model answer as well. Thank you so much for that question. That, that sounds like a really interesting tool. Um, we haven't considered it because Feedback Fruits actually uh, also includes an automatic feedback tool. Um, so uh, we've been toying around with the idea. We, we've actually just started these courses now, so uh, we haven't had the first uh, peer assessment activity yet. Um, but we've been toying with the idea of using a Feedback Fruits automatic feedback tool where you can, I think in a similar vein, say I want students to use certain keywords. You can put in uh, information about a minimum or maximum number of words, and that way you've got uh, much more information on the analytical dashboard as well. But uh, the H5P, I mean, we love it. We use it for all the designs. So, uh, so yeah, maybe, uh, maybe we should take a look at that too.